Okay, so continuing with our design methods using root locus, what we will see in this particular lecture is design criterion to improve the steady state performance and steady state performance essentially means reducing the steady state errors either getting them to 0 or having them below some predefined values. This is done with something which we call a lag compensation. Lag compensation is an approximation of an integral control. We saw how adding an integrator increases the type of the system, increasing the type of the systems helps me, helps me track signals in a better way. Right? So, we had this little relation between uh, what is the relation between a type 2 system and the acceleration error, acceleration error constant, the velocity error constants and so on. Right? So, so this, this lecture we will focus on the lag compensation which is an approximation of a PI controller. Okay, so, so let us start uh, with an example. Right? So, given a plant a certain trans transient specifications which translate to zeta being 0.5, omega n being 2.7. These are my transient specifications and the steady state specification says that my kV should be greater than 10. Right? Okay. So, first I draw the root locus and I see that at a certain value of gain k which is 32.4, my root locus passes through the dominant poles. And the root locus passes through the poles which are defined by this zeta and omega n. Okay, so, I, know, I do not really need to worry about the transient specifications because my root locus actually passes through those points by just mere adjustment of the gain. Okay, Let us now worry about the steady state error. The error constant kv here is 1.8 and I want to, to make this larger than 10. So, the question here is can we design a compensator? in such a way that it has kV greater than 10, but not really alter this. I do not want this thing to be messed up. right? I want that to design a controller such a way that this steady state specification is met by not disturbing too much of what is happening here in terms of the transient specifications. Okay, Let us see how we can do that. right? So, consider again a, a standard closed loop system. Right. So, I have uh, uh, the, steady, the, the error uh, again k, a plant g, the open loop transfer function is given by this you know where g has a set of poles, uh, sorry a set g has set of zeros, a pole at the origin and set of other poles. Right. So, the transient specifications require the dominant closed loop poles to be at some st right, which are computed by these two numbers. Okay. The first thing is assuming there is a k greater than 0 such that the root locus passes through S d, we compute the gain k in the following way. Again this is just the magnitude criterion that g times h was equal to 1 or in this case k times g s would have its magnitude to be equal to 1. Okay. Then we look at the steady state error right? k v is limit s tends to 0 of this entire number and I am, I am deliberately looking at a type 1 system right? because a type 0 system cannot track a, a, a ramp input whereas for a type 2 system the steady state error is 0, k v is 0. So, if k v is some finite number I am, I am essentially looking at a type 1 system. Again we can refer to this table. Okay. So, how would this look like? Well, the lag compensator provides this facility. So, the first thing I would if I if I look at the ideal you know integral compensator I would say that I should place a pole at the origin which means well which which would eliminate the steady state error completely. But what I told you is that an ideal integrator cannot be realized. So, what you will say well just put it slightly to the left this can be realized right? that would be the first thing that in, in the lead compensator we just said okay, just add a 0 because it pulls my root locus to the left and we see that it has its own, own set of troubles. Now, if I just add a pole slightly to the left say instead of 0, let us say I add at 0 0.05. Okay. Now, does this meet the steady state conditions possibly, but what this will do is it will contribute certain angle. right? So, this G or G C will contribute certain angle to the plant and then this condition would be violated. 
that is easy to check. So, we want to add this pole here in such a way that it does not contribute to the angle or the angle contribution is as minimal as possible and therefore, I start with this pole and I add a 0 slightly to the left. I can say why not to the right, well I do not really want, so I want again the dominance condition to be ensured so that the pole moves to the left okay? and by construction also it is kind of obvious. So, I the lag, lag compensator by construction looks like this in such a way that the beta now which is analogous to the alpha earlier, this beta is now greater than 1 and z and p must be placed so close to each other that the angle contribution is less than 5. I cannot make it 0 because if I make it 0, the pole would uh, sit on the 0, they would cancel out each other and there would be no compensation. Right? So, it is desirable to have g, the angle of g c to be as small as possible to have the least effect on the transient behavior. So, that is what we have to be careful in this in this design procedure. Okay? So, here in this case, this is the compensating pole, the 0 should be to the left of the pole, right? contrast to what was happening earlier that the 0 was to the right of the pole. Okay, first, let us see what is the effect of the closed loop gain k while we add the lag compensator. Earlier we had computed the gain to be something like this, right? k this in such a way that S d was passing through the root locus. Now, how much does the gain change when I add a lag compensator? So, k cap which is the total gain when I add a lag compensator is the original gain k plus this extra factor. Okay? Now, the reason why we place these two close to each other are also that these the k cap should be as close to k as possible right and these magnitudes if you see they are you know, kind of almost equal because these are very close to each other so k cap for k cap should to be equal to k this z s d plus z g the magnitude of this should be the same as this one right so this this is also what is desired in such a way that we really do not disturb the transient requirements. Okay, now, what is the error constant for the compensated system? The velocity error constant is k tends to 0, k cap g c times g right? and this turns out to be this is k v z g by p g and this k v is the k v of the uncompensated system and this guy k v of the uncompensated system. Okay? Now, when I were to design this compensator, I am now worried about what is the location of these poles and zeros. Okay? And the unknown, one of the factors that was deciding was this beta. Beta is an unknown and tau is the other unknown. Okay. K v of the compensated system is related to the K v of the uncompensated system via these two numbers z g and p g. And based on this construction of the compensator z g by p g is beta. Okay. Now, I know how to find beta. Right? This is known to me. Right? This is from the given specification. So, I can find out what is beta. So, for the appropriate design, we must have beta as the ratio of the desired error constant to the error constant of the compensated system, which helps me in finding the location of z g and p g appropriately. Okay, so, how, how are these guys placed? So, first thing is to obtain a large range of factors. I would have them as close to the origin as possible say at point 1 or point not not 1 and so on. So, the factors can be increased by just you know, uh, so, so if, if, I had, if I am at point 1 or point, point 0 1 and I want to have a factor of 10, I can easily go to point 1 right, and so on. So, the 0 must be made as small as possible and p g must then be fixed. So, I first select the 0. 
once I select the 0 since I know beta I can fix what is my pg right. So, what must also be ensured is that the angle contribution is as minimal as possible right less than 5 degrees. Unlike the lead compensator there is no constructive way here neither a graphical way of choosing Z c and P c right. There we had a beautiful way of, of finding the gamma which minimize which maximizes the alpha and we could explicitly compute the formulas. So, here what we will do is we will just look at a, a graphical method which without much proofs of what is happening, but what this method will ensure is that the angle contribution is less than 5 degrees. Okay. So, what do I do is I take this constant zeta line or the line joining the origin to S d. From this line I draw another line which is at an angle less than 10 degrees should be 7 or 8 really you could do a little modification once we have the first iteration of design. So, once I have this say let I, I fix this angle at 9 degrees. I just draw another line and this will give me the row the location of the 0. Once I know the location of 0 I can easily find what is the location of the pole right with this with this formula because I know beta and beta is 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 derived by comparing the desired error constant to the or to the uh, to the error constant of the uncompensated system. Okay, so, again back to the example. Right, so, we have uh, we knew that uh, just by adjusting again to 32.4 the transient specifications are met. Now, I am interested in the steady state specification right. The k v of the open loop or the uncompensated system is 1.8 and this is not satisfied it is it is quite, quite obvious ok. Now, this is the desired error constant. So, beta is k v hat by k v is 5.4 and beta is always uh, greater than 1 right. So, now just by doing the method as suggested earlier if I put my 0 at point 1 the pole location turns out to be at point 108 and the lag form of the lag compensator is is something like this. I will not really have a gain k here because I do not really want to, to do so the, the gain contribution of this entire thing should be as close to 1 as possible right and what is the angle contribution well it is just 0 0.89 degrees is less than 5. So, the lag compensator does not really alter the transient performance too much as we see here right. So, the uncompensated system the red one which was which was the uh, the, the, the root locus of the uncompensated system which is the gain adjustment is the is the red line and we see the blue line is just slightly to the to the right and this is this is not not very very surprising because I am adding a 0 uh, adding a pole at the origin and this has the effect or, or pole very close to the origin this has the effect of pulling the root locus slightly to the right. But we see we what we saw here we, is we are improving the steady state uh, performance by having just very little effect on the transients and we could you know maybe choose alter this slightly you know to 0 0.09 and check such that the effect is minimal. It will never it will never be a condition that the, the that the red and the blue lines match completely. So, what we would see from this plot is that the original gain of 32.4 would not work because it does not really lie on the root locus, the root locus has moved slightly to the left. So, what is the new gain k that we would choose? One method is to choose is to fix up the constant zeta line. Right, and then see the intersection of the constant zeta line with the new root locus which is slightly shifted to the right and then compute the new gain right and that would turn out to be it is 32.65 right. So, that that is what that is what we would do here right and if if so a constant zeta line would ensure that the peak overshoot does not change at all. But if we were are more interested in the settling time then I would look at the intersection with the constant omega n line and then choose the gain appropriately. It depends on what kind of specifications I am looking at. So, this slight gain adjustment is just done by the root locus here by looking either at the constant zeta lines when my 
transient when my peak overshoot is 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 more important or the constant omega n line when my steady state uh, or the settling time is is more important right so this is just like the, the basic design procedure for a lag compensator so we have seen how lag compensators helps in improve the steady state response in terms of the steady state error in the next lecture we will see given a certain system where neither the transient specifications are met nor the steady state performance requirements are met in that case how we will compensate the system where we would need combination of both the lead and the lag compensator and we will see how to go about the design procedure in that case. Thank you.